guests of Anthony McAllister. All right. Uh, Ronnie Mobley and Jeff Kerbin, guests of Keith McAnulty. Rick Chapman, guest of Arthur Gardner. Tim Goodwin, guest of Del Goodwin. All right, and then we have uh, Les Nowling, who's a Rotaract member, guest of Alan Richards. All right, anyone I missed? No, I think we're good. All right. Um, Catherine, are, are we ready? Me? Yeah. Catherine's coming. Okay. Oh, <laughs> There's another Catherine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm right, I'm getting it over because everybody's staring at me and wondering who's fixing to get this. <laughs> this, this is an exciting part. Yeah, sure. 3,573 points. This has been a good one. 7, 8, 7, 7. Are you sure? Are you sure? Seven, eight, seven, seven. John. I did, and I did check. It is. Lives on. Wow. Lives on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So it's still in there. Well, I'll be thinking other than Keith. I'm sorry. Keith. Great for Anthony there. Oh. He, he no, you know, I said that wrong. I don't Anthony. know why I said that. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. <laughs> Hello. My name is Anthony McAllister. I'm on the board with SEAC. And we are very excited about announcing the upcoming show, Chosen, and the amazing Technicolor Dream Code. The show opens on the stage at the Opera House on April the 26th and plays through the 30th every night at 7 p.m. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Code is an unforgettable musical based on the Code of Many Colors story within the book of Genesis and follows Joseph through a wild journey of betrayal, love, acceptance, and revelation. Tickets are on sale now. They're going quickly, so go ahead and go on and purchase yours today. I left information on the table, so uh, you can grab that and learn more about the show and more about tickets. Of course, we have a special treat today. Um, uh, one of the cast members, Mary Catherine Parrott, is here, because she's going to um, sing one of the songs in the play. She plays the narrator. As far as her bio, it states that she's been involved in music as long as she can remember. And although her focus has been on opera for the last several years, she is thrilled to be performing in one of her favorite musicals in her first CX show. Her education includes a master's of music from the University of North Texas and a bachelor of music from Sanford University in Birmingham. She has recently moved to Dothan and with her husband, Reed, where, and she also teaches voice and piano throughout the community and sings throughout the community. The couple attends First Baptist where her husband works as a minister there. Let's welcome her as she performs for us today. Fairly right wing when there 
it's at six o'clock at Botanical Gardens. If you have not already signed up the sheets or the last day you can sign up on the sheets, but we can accept emails this week. But I'd like to know by the end of the day a, a good count so I can give them our disturbing services that we do on catering. And if you if you have already signed up and you do, do not remember you signed up, sign up again, doesn't matter. I'll go through it and, and verify if it's made duplicates. But make sure you signed up with those to be attending, your families, not just your significant other or your spouse or whoever, if you got some grandchildren or children you want to invite, make sure you write that down today and get those in. So we'll be meeting uh, at six o'clock. Come early, we'll be there. New member uh, committee, uh, you get your assignments this week, waiting for the numbers come in and what we're gonna need to do next Monday. Uh, in preparation for next Monday's pre well, picnic preparation. So make sure you sign up today and uh, or let, let me know. And if you have uh, that number has changed and you said, I can't find the sheet, I was sitting at a different table the last few weeks, it's okay. Write it down said, and put the day's date on it. This is your updated number. I'll go through it. Find if you had put down three and now you're going to have five, or vice versa, you're going to have, you had three, now you're going to have two. Doesn't matter. Uh, I just need to know so I can give account and start services that's happening when I meet with them. Thank you, President Sheila. Thank you, Jen. Last week we were at the National Camp Festival and we had our senior luncheon. I think we were expecting around 400 or so there. It was a great turnout. Um, I don't believe Rosemary or Mary Beth are here, but if you see them, thank them because they did an outstanding job of pulling it all together. There are some pictures that have been flashing across, and then we're going to be adding some to the website. But it was it was so great, and I think the seniors really had a good time. So thank you for what you do to make that possible. All right, now Keith is coming up to introduce. <laughs> Our speaker. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, when my name got drawn for the program, which everybody knows was like three or four months ago, we do it so far in advance. It just happened to be about a day or two after Coach Summerall had been named head coach at Troy University. So I immediately got on the phone and reached out to our CEO, Jeff Kirvin at Troy Bank and Trust. And he got me in touch with Brent Jones, the athletic director. And Brent immediately um, committed Coach Summerall to come. <laughs> <laughs> he, he made a comment coming in that this was the furthest in advance he'd ever scheduled a speaking <laughs> event. Um, so much so I'll never put this contract. <laughs> So it's my pleasure to introduce Brent Jones, the athletic director, and then he will introduce our speaker. I'm going to be brief, uh, but I do want to hit on a few points. Uh, first off, y'all had a ringer in here because I literally, I get the chance to speak at all the different rotary clubs across the state, okay? And the wiregrass is so important to us, but y'all had to be the best sounding I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Be quite honest, um, I see a lot of fans, alums, donors, sweet holders in attendance. Uh, the Wiregrass means a lot to us. And so I've been here five years now, uh, two and a half as the deputy AD, and then two and a half uh, as the athletic director. And one of the first things we did is when I got the job uh, as a deputy AD is I looked at a heat map. Where are all of our alums? And you would not believe from the river region to the Wiregrass uh, the amount of alums that we have here. So we circled Dover. We circled the wiregrass and how important that was. And so I drove down here several times and it was disappointing and now it's encouraging. I was not able to find any Troy merchandise when I first came here five years ago. And there was a belt, one belt at Eagle Eye. Uh, now Eagle Eye carries us as much as they do as FSU, Auburn, Alabama, and Georgia. That's the power of Troy University. That's the power of our fans. That's the power of our alums. And so that is, and oh, by the way, those are uh, Susan and Mark. They're also Troy Dothan graduates. And so they believed in the cause. And so that's what we're here to do is to get people to believe in. Troy University is an amazing university. Uh, I should also mention we have a Hall of Famer, an Athletic Hall of Famer sitting here as well as with Ronnie. And I, I do have a quick story. 
um, about how Ronnie's helped me. But I want to do a brief update on the athletic department, okay? And so we lead by the W-4. If you don't remember anything else that I say, it's the, it's the W-4. It's winning in the classroom. That's the first thing. Winning in the community. We want to be great partners, not just to Troy, not just to the River Region, but the Wiregrass all across the state. Winning on the playing field. We want to be super competitive. We are, and I want to touch on that. And then winning in the stands. We have to have fan support. We have to have donors. We have to have people that show up that make a difference for our student athletes. Um, this year has been unprecedented. We just came off men's and women's basketball teams both playing in the postseason. Our women's basketball team has won five out of the last seven Sunbelt Conference championships. Our women's team hosted Alabama in the WNIT. Our men's team got 20 wins as well for the first time in five years. We went to Daytona Beach uh, in the CBI. The momentum that we have across the board is real. The trajectory is high. Volleyball, being able to host, play in the postseason for the first time in three years. To be able to have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back winning seasons, first time in the history of Troy to be able to do that. We've hired four coaches recently. Uh, women's soccer, Robert Lane, who is the associate head coach at the University of Georgia, a top 50 program, who just came in the spring. You don't play competitively. You have exhibitions. Who just beat Sanford University, who's top 30. We have our women's golf team right now, who's top four in the Sunbelt Conference playing. Our baseball team is 25 and 13, third in the conference. Our softball team is 23 and 13, third in the conference. You look across the board. We just set records at Auburn with our outdoor track. All of our sports are achieving a very, very high level, and that cannot be done without the great support of our university, as well as without the great support of uh, our fans. But I do want to say this. I want to pick on uh, or highlight one, um, <laughs> one sport in general. So last year made the decision that we were going to part ways uh, and go in a different direction with our men's golf program. And so very successful, won national championships, Division II level, won five Sunbelt Conference championships, four in a row at one point playing in the NCAA tournament. And so I, I asked for two people to help, both Hall of Famers, one being Hall McCreary, uh, who's up in, in Troy, and the other one being Ronnie. And so um, with that, we hired an absolute winner. So much so that that head coach uh, has won back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tournaments for the first time that I can remember since we've been Division One, We're one of only two schools that have won three tournaments this year. So, Ronnie, for how much we put into that, Jeff, thank you for allowing uh, to give the time off to be able to do that. But the energy and enthusiasm that we put in the research for the men's golf, I hope it's going to pay, and I know it is, it's going to pay dividends with Coach Summerall. Um, as I went through the process, and I'll be honest, Keith, um, I was delirious at that point when you emailed me. So, it was, and, and we had a Literally, the Zoom was three and a half, four hours that, that I had with Coach Summerall. I knew him before, uh, but this was not given. It was earned. We had an amazing committee, but uh, spoke to over probably about 25 different candidates, had 50 on the board, and we kept narrowing down, narrowing down. And what I was looking for was this. I was looking for integrity. I was looking for a proven winner. I wanted a person who wanted to be a Troy, who would connect not only with our fans, but with our student athletes. I wanted someone who was passionate, who was a dogged recruiter. It was a proven winner and knew how to do it at Troy. And at the end of the day, didn't just want to be a head coach. Just like I don't want to just be an AD, I want to be an AD at Troy. I want that person to be a partner and to have as much energy and as much integrity that we pour into this program. And I cannot be more excited to be able to have Coach Summerall and what he's already done in flipping the culture, flipping the excitement, the passion that we all have. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this Saturday's team day. It's free, so you can come up there, get a taste of the action. It starts with a fun run. We have Legends lunch. We have a yard sale, first time we've done this. Uh, and then at the same time, we have Tea Day as well. Uh, it's also Troy Fest, so we're going to have 10, 20,000 people downtown. It's going to be a great time. I will tell you this. I learned a long time ago, worked in college athletics 20 years. They don't take diplomas. We do not take diplomas up at the gates. It doesn't matter who you are. I will tell you this. We put on one of the best game day atmospheres you've ever seen. And that's what we're hoping for this fall. We host Army on Veterans Day. And so it's going to be hopefully a sold out crowd. And so to be able to host Southern Miss, to be able to have Alabama AM, uh, Marshall, um, those are big time opponents. We start off at Ole Miss. Um, and so I will tell you this we need everybody. 
but he's the real deal, and you're going to hear from him now. Good summer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, really, you know, Brett has never had any problem volunteering me for anything. Uh, I get, I get, I get invited to a lot of things. Uh, this is one that, and I, I did get to, to agree to during spring practice to kind of leave me alone with some things, but this one was on the calendar. We've got uh, practice tomorrow, practice Thursday, and then T day Saturday. Saturday. So I have avoided for about a month a lot of public stuff, just try to bury myself with our team in our offices and uh, improving, you know, schematically what we're doing. Also trying to improve our roster as much as possible while playing at the same time, installing the culture and the chemistry uh, of a program and what the expectations and standards are daily uh, within our building. Because anytime you walk into something new, you have to identify where it's at and then start to evaluate where do you want it to go and how do you get it there. And so we've been hard at work. Um, really, uh, we, we've had 12 practices. We've got a very engaged team, a hungry team, a team that I think is ready for direction. Um, we've got a lot of good young men within our locker room. Uh, I've walked into a lot of different environments before, and you, you walk in, you're like, all right, this is a mess in a lot of different areas. The young men on our team are good young men. It's our job to, to task, we're tasked to give them direction and where we're going and how we're going to be successful, um, which has been fun. Uh, we've had we've had a really good spring practice so far. Everything we're going to do in our program is going to be players first. Uh, I, I, I kid around a lot, but, you know, coaches get a lot of attention in our game. But the last time I checked, there would be no coaches if there were no players. Right? And so for us, every decision we make as a staff, Every decision I make as the head football coach at Troy um, is never about me. It's constantly everything that comes across my desk. I, I ask myself one question, what's in the best interest of our players individually and collectively as a team, not in what's my best interest. It's about the team and everything we do is about the team. Um, we've, we've instilled a mantra within our program, rise to build has sort of been the, the battle cry. Um, those three words we, we've created our own definitions for, uh, not, not Webster's definition, but Troy football's definition and rise means to get up, come up, or go up. Two is the direction that you're heading towards or something you're going towards. And then building is to make stronger or more intense and, and to establish and solidify the foundation. And so every day, um, personally, I use that as I'm rising to figure out how do I build each young man in our program to be their best individually and then at the same time how do i build our entire program to be its best um a, a, as a whole football program and so really been hard at work been a, been a lot of hours um trying to get things headed in the right direction very encouraged by what we've seen so far um and and really uh excited about what the future holds um we've got a lot of challenges ahead of us but we're, we're we could not be more thrilled to be taking them head on uh, with the young men we have on our roster. So the constantly uh, building your roster through recruiting this day and age has changed with uh, the transfer portal stuff that's kind of created free agency in college football in some regards, um, but but really um, encouraged about where we're headed. So grateful to be the head football coach of Troy. Love, love the university. My, my wife and I we were there. I was an assistant for Neil Brown for three years. Uh, between 2015 and 17. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. I'm from Alabama. Alabama is home to me. Me and my wife both grew up in North Alabama, uh, but but served as assistant here, left here, went to Ole Miss for a year, and then the University of Kentucky the last three. And um, Kentucky was my alma mater. Uh, Mark Stoops is a dear friend of mine, uh, a great mentor of mine, and Mark called me and asked me if I'd return to the University of Kentucky without hesitation, I said yes. Um, and so I was really in a situation where I was very content and very happy to be doing what I was doing and where I was doing it at and who I was doing it for. Uh, Mark uh, will be a lifelong friend of mine. And, uh, and, and Kentucky is a special place to me because it's where I went to school and where I played. Um, I, I get around with all the linebackers I've always coached at the University of Kentucky and 
2004, I led the team in trips. I wasn't fast enough to tackle very many people because I couldn't get in front of them, but I would trip them from behind a lot. So, um, but we, uh, but 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 leaving Kentucky was not an easy thing for us. There were a lot of things during my time there that um, had been presented other schools that have called and said, hey, would you be interested in this? Would you be interested in that? And, and most of the time, those conversations were pretty short and pretty abrupt of, no, I'm, I'm very happy right where I'm at. Um, when Brent called and the job was open and the process began, uh, it was one that we did not hesitate as a family about. Um, was it something we were interested in? Because of our experience at Troy, uh, the first time we loved the city, the university, and the surrounding communities, um, this area, the Wiregrass region, uh, it, it feels like home to us. And it did when we were here the first time, and it, and it already has uh, this stint, and we are grateful to be back. There were not many things that were going to get our attention. Troy did. And uh, during that process, as Brent mentioned, we, we Zoomed up the Sunday after we played Louisville. Um, and and I, I was, you know, we played at Louisville that Saturday night. And the game was at like six or seven o'clock. Um, we didn't get home till probably 1 a.m. And we beat the dog out a little. I'm talking about we laid it on them good. And and we had a pretty good time that Saturday night as a staff. And I woke up the next morning like, man, I got to shake off the cobwebs to make sure I present well here because I am trying to get this job. So, uh, <laughs> but but we, we the, the process was great. Brent and his staff were very thorough. The university alignment in our leadership, the one thing I would say to you, and, and you guys are uh, in your business professional world, the most important thing I think in any organization is alignment. Um, and we are very fortunate at Troy University, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Hawkins his leadership. Uh, I think when you look at the picture of what college leadership is, I think Dr. Hawkins' picture is probably next to it. Um, he's been there for over 30 years. And all you have to do is drive through campus to see how everything's been done first class. And so Dr. Hawkins, it starts with him, Brent and his staff, the Athletics Administration do a, a fantastic job. Our board of trustees uh, are, are unbelievable in their support and their service. And, and I'm grateful because I think as a head football coach, you know, we get a lot of credit when things go well and we get and we probably get too much credit when things go well, to be quite honest. We get a lot of blame when things don't go well. We deserve it. We got broad shoulders. We can take it on. But I also think places that are successful in, in areas like football, it's not just one person. It's not just the coaches. It takes a, a collection and gathering of many people going in the right direction, the same direction. Um, would like to encourage you to come engage with our program. Uh, we, you know, our student athletes, they, they, they thrive off of support. It, it helps them understand what they do is appreciated. Uh, there's nothing like playing in front of a home field crowd and having a home field advantage. One thing that makes Troy football, and I think Troy Athletics unique, is it is an SEC-like environment. When I was there as an assistant last, I can recall three or four games. We played at App State uh, in 2016, and we beat them at home. Uh, the, the crowd helped us win the game. And there were several games in that stretch that we went 21 and four my last two years there as the assistant head coach. And, and, and the stadium helped us win games. The crowd helped us win games. And we weren't always the better team. Uh, we need that again. Um, that, that helps push us over the edge and creates a whole home field advantage. And that's something we look forward uh, to upon drawing upon is the support of uh, the fan base. So um, appreciate you guys having us. I'll do something, Brent, man, I like this, but I'm going to open up. If anybody has a question, I will take questions. The two I won't answer are who's going to be the starting quarterback and what's your record going to be. I can't tell you either one of those. All right, we're not there yet. But who has any questions, I will take a question. What is your base in offense team? That's a great question. So we're going to run the ball and be physical at the line of scrimmage, creating an identity to run the football. Um, we're going to be somewhat pro style. We'll play the game in 11 and 12 personnel, which means you're going to play with either one tight end and three receivers or one tight end, two tight ends and two receivers. Um, but we want to run the football. I think also at times you've got to make sure that you play the strengths of your team. So what I mean by that is uh, you evaluate your roster and we'll have um, touch charts that will basically track 
how many touches are our best players getting to make sure we're getting our best players the football. Um, it's really not hard to figure out when you watch us practice who our top three or four offensive skill players are. I'm going to make sure our offensive staff gets them the football. At the end of the day, it's about players, not plays. We do have a good scheme. Um, we've got an offensive coordinator named Joe Craddock. Joe is Chad Morris's OC at SMU and at Arkansas. Joe's a product of Alabama. He, he went to um, Briarwood up in Birmingham. Joe coached at Clemson for Dabo Sweeney. Um, Joe was last at UAB. And then our offensive line coach, Cole Popovich, he's a big part of how we're putting it together. He's our run game coordinator, offensive line coach, and Cole came to us by way of the New England Patriots. He was the O-line coach there for a couple of years ago. Uh, and so those are the two guys really putting our offensive game play together. I'm a defensive guy by trade. I have no problem walking to that offensive staff room and telling them what I want to see too, though. So they 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 hear very clearly what I want to see the offense. Thank you. Yes, Sign it. Thank you. Is name, image, and likeness going to help for her for you? Yeah, I think it'll help. I think we've got for the landscape of um, in, in the Sun Belt Conference. I think we've got the best um, alumni and community involvement. Um, I really believe in a place like Troy, name, image, likeness is best suited. You know, you've seen some people we're talking about as we walked in, how some of the SEC models have been different and maybe it's impacted recruiting. Um, I would like for Troy really for it to reward the young men that are already on our team that have had success. So um, I can't broker deals, but there's young men on our team that, that have been in the program that have done things the right way and played at a high level and are model citizens. I would like to see them get rewarded by local businesses and companies that have an attachment to Troy. Um, so I, I think it can help through maybe re rewarding young men who are doing things the right way. I do think from a coach's perspective, you've got to be aware of it because you got to make sure it's not divisive in a locker room because you have created a business model within a team setting that can be tricky. But uh, for us, it'll be less about recruitment. We're at an SEC level. When I was there the last four years, a lot of that started to trickle into maybe some of the recruiting aspects of things. I think for us, it's more about um, how do you how do you maybe partner with uh, current players who are already doing things the right way that should be re rewarded for what they've done. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the transfer portal? Yeah, I think you know it's the sign of the times you got to embrace it. I'm not going to get a change if I don't like it. So we're going to, we've got to use it to our advantage. Um, I do think it's tricky because there are some schools that are going to maybe post players or tamper with players before they're in the portal. So you got to, you kind of got to know what's going to happen before, um, before it happens. Um, we're not going to build our roster through transfers exclusively. We'll supplement our roster through transfers, maybe with, needs we have at glaring holes or places where we lack depth. Um, I'm not against it. I mean, I think whatever's good for the players, I'm for. Um, I'm not against players. I'm for the players. Whatever's going to help our student athletes, I'm for it. I do think um, we've done a really good job as a staff trying to educate our team on the, my biggest concern with it is, is, um, you know, there's going to be adversity in everything you do in life. You're going to walk in and you're not just going to get anointed being number one. And so I, the, the, from the big picture issue, the biggest thing that scares me is I just want to make sure we're not training our young people the, the first sign of adversity just to go quit and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's on us as coaches to educate our young men that it's a process to become the best you can be and become a starter. And so I think it's on us to educate them and but if you have to embrace it, they're not going to change it. Even if I don't like it, it's the NCAA's way right now. So that's, that's the model we're using. And, and we're going to utilize it to help supplement our roster to make it the best it can be. Any other questions? That's it. Go well, Trojans. Go Trojans. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you all for having us. Director Jones and Coach Summerall, appreciate you being here and um, taking questions and everything you had to say to bring us kind of up to date. Um, Stan, thank you for being our greeter today for our visitors and um, I'd like to invite all of our visitors to join us again.
board meeting. We did have a board meeting afterwards. Oh, I, I thought you did. <laughs> <laughs> I the first on <laughs> I thought you said Spain. Thank you for bringing uh, oh, family and saying it was beautiful <laughs> and the show starts Tuesday night and yeah. goes through Saturday. Saturday yeah. night. Every night at 7 o'clock. Every night at 7 o'clock. And they always do an awesome job. Always. Mm -hmm. So, next week, we won't be here. We will be at the Botanical Gardens, the beautiful Dothan Botanical Gardens. And bring your family. Sign up today to let James know so we can plan. We're going to try and uh, make it a lot of fun for everybody. So thank you guys for being here. Let's stand and have a fair boy Well, there you go. <laughs> of the things that we think, say, and do. Is, is it true? Is it fair? Is it all concerned with a bill of goodwill and better friendships? Will it be an official? Thank you guys.